Mr. Milbert, how did the world economy perform in October and what does the DBICS tell us about it? Well, the DBICS continues to decline. Uh, this is no surprise given that we saw a second quarter 2011 where in what was negative or, or very sluggish in many industrialized countries. And given that we have this many fiscal crises, it's also no surprise that the economy is now deteriorating. You're talking about the second quarter, not about the third quarter, 2011? Well, we, we saw the first slowdown in the second quarter. In the third quarter, is this, uh, the picture is similar. Um, some, cu some countries were better in the third quarter than in the second quarter, and some other countries was the opposite way. But overall, we see slower growth rates than in mm. 2010 and in the first quarter. Do you see some danger for a recession in the next quarters? Yes, for the debt Latin countries and um, the countries which have to consolidate now to improve their debt sustainability, it's clear that there is a recession risk and it could not only to a mild recession but also to a m m more severe recession. And Italy as well? Italy as well. The growth rates are relatively sluggish in recent um, quarters and also in the last 10 years growth was relatively sluggish. So if they do not deliver um, mm -hmm. and if they do not improves the efficiency in the public sector, it's clearly a risk that um, Italy is close to recession or is mm -hmm. falling into recession in the next years. In the USA? Quarters. <laughs> in the USA, sorry, the picture seems to be a bit better. Um, there, there's no danger of recession. We had a growth rate of 2.5 in the third mm -hmm. quarter, but how do you see the future? Well, maybe this was more a special effect given that they have lowered the growth rate as a saving rate uh, as a private households because private income was negative, real private income was negative and real private expenditures were positive. The difference is the lower savings rate, so this is a temporary effect. They cannot lower the, the savings rate again and again. That's the one point. And the other point, we have special effect due to um, and tax incentive to invest in the second half of 2011. Um, this will, of course, not be the case in 2012. And then we expect lower growth rates also for the US. Mm -hmm. And let's have a look over the Pacific to Asia to Japan. Mm -hmm. What does the indicators tell us about the performance of Japanese economy? Mm -hmm. Well, the structural issues are back again after the tsunami and earthquake hit, um, growth rates declined. Now we have some benefits due to the reconstruction of Japan's um, earthquake hit areas. But the structural issues are back on the agenda. We have deflation, um, relatively low growth rates, and the structural issues are not solved by an um, incompetent government. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we're asking for more structural reforms. Of course, yes. They should reshuffle their healthcare system. They should improve their pension ref system. Um, this sh should help to increase growth rates and to bring the economy out of the deflation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All things that happened in Germany over the last mm. 10 years, uh, and this for Germany uh, has a relatively strong economy, mm -hmm. uh, a low jobless rate. But how do you see the um, um, the next? quarters for Germany, uh, you see also a, a bit of danger of, of a small recession maybe? Yes, there is a danger. We are relatively positive for the third quarter, um, 2011, but then gr growth rates should be close to zero or even negative maybe in the, in, in the winter half. So it, it's clear the German economy will also be hit by the slowdown of the world economy. Mm -hmm. And this for uh, your prediction is also lowered uh, as the prediction of the German governan, uh, mm -hmm. government is from 1.8 to 1.0 for the next year? Yes, we also expect a growth rate around 1% in 2012. Um, it's in line with, with our view. Okay, thank you very much so far.